to another series of Cooking with ATF. I'm here and so excited with Miss Giselle Eli, who I think has a new last name. <laughs> I do, Francis. So I'm really excited to hear about um, what you've been doing, Giselle, in the last, I don't know, when did we graduate from high school? Like 20 years ago. 20 years ago. <laughs> so, but more importantly, we're here to cook Trini and Tobago chicken brown stew. Um, and so my name is Evelyn Sala. I am the CEO for At The Forefront. We create safe spaces for Black women and girls to have critical conversations. And we utilize our cooking series to, to get into it. So maybe we'll do a quick round of introductions. I'm going to hand over to our youth coordinator who will be um, hosting this session with Giselle Lucy Amadou. I'm calling in from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, hi. Thank you so much for joining. I am Lucy Amadou. As Evelyn has mentioned, I'm the youth coordinator uh, for At The Forefront. Um, I am here with my friend Karina. Hi, guys. <laughs> Um, so, um, Evelyn, should I let everyone introduce themselves or should I jump right in and, and get started with a little bit about um, ATF? Yeah, maybe everyone could chat in your intro. Who are you? Where are you calling from? Um, a little more about whether you've ever had chicken brown stew or been to TNT. Um, so we'd love to hear more from you. So I'll hand back over to you, Lucy. Okay, perfect. Thank you and welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for um, joining us in this, other, in this new installment of Cooking with ATF. For those of you who might be new and uh, not know who ATF is, uh, we are a women, a black women led think tank um, that is committed to um, social justice and, rac uh, and um, uh, racial equity and gender equity. And we are a collective of um, globally, global, global um, black women from all over um, the, the US, the diaspora and Africa uh, with experience in the development world, uh, international development. And this think tank, um, the purpose is really to elevate the voices of black women who um, can then participate in the, the decision-making especially in the development world that um, the concerns them, which is a gap that um, this organization is seeking to, um, to fix in, in, indeed. Um, as part of the At The Forefront initiative, we also have a youth initiative that is called BRIGHT, um, which I'm very, very proud of. And BRIGHT stands for Black Girls Revolutionize influence globally, heal, and thrive. And it really seeks to elevate um, the voices of um, Black young girls, Black girls, so that they become agents and are empowered to make decisions uh, about their own lives. Um, so yes, as I mentioned, we have the Bright Initiative, which is an initiative we uh, have launched a couple of um, months ago. Uh, and if you are very, if you are interested, we really highly invite you to check out both the At the Forefront website as well as um, the Youth Initiative um, in particular. And uh, just as a bit of background, if it's your first time here, we do several events. We do several things, including research. Um, to, to make sure that there's data available that contributes to um, racial equality and gender equity. Uh, we really believe in a pan-Africanist approach and an intersectional feminist approach uh, and, and really want to ensure a, a better environment for all women, but particularly Black women and women of um, African descent and the diaspora. Um, so we are very happy to be doing this. This is um, a fun event that we do that is similar to our critical conversations because food is a very important thing in our cultures. And it's a really, um, a lot of deep and interesting conversations take place in the kitchen. So we're hoping that you will, you know, join us here, chime into the conversation and, and really act like you're in your kitchen talking to your aunts and cousins or, mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or sisters. So um, welcome and I will let um, 
Evelyn or Alice, if she's on, um, introduce uh, Giselle. But perhaps before that, uh, if other members of ATF uh, who are present on the call can introduce themselves, so you have a bit of an idea of who here um, is part of the collective. Hello. Yeah. Um, I'm Lisa, and I'm the communications lead with ATF. Um, I'm based in Nairobi, Kenya, and I'm from here as well. Um, and I always enjoy these cooking events, mainly because I like I, I think of cooking as like a therapeutic thing. So getting to learn to cook something new is always something exciting for me. And Caribbean food is something I've never cooked. So this is going to be fun. Thank you. Hi, Lucy. Hi, guys. I'm Tamara. Hi, I'm with Tamara. ATF as well. Hi. I'm actually watching today. I don't have my ingredients, so I'll make it another time, but I'm just going to be watching. I'm Alice, also with At The Forefront. My goal is to try and make, <laughs> but also have um, kids in the background around, so we're going to do our best. So, so if, if you're cooking along with us, you know, post it in the chat. Um, uh, we'd like to see how many people are cooking. Uh, Karina and I will be cooking as well. <laughs> All right. So Alice, maybe over to you to introduce us to our lovely guest. Welcome, everybody. Sorry for joining late. Great to have everybody on. Um, really excited today to have Giselle Eli, who's a childhood friend of mine. Um, and Giselle, Evelyn, and myself all went to high school together in New Rochelle, New York. And so it's really, um, it's a nice like global connection. I'm right now in the Dominican Republic. Giselle is in New York um, and Evelyn is in Nairobi. So it's nice to kind of like keep our little New Rochelle network going. <laughs> um, <laughs> class of 1999, I know. I still have the, um, our, you know, those like, champagne flute things that we got from at prom. Um, graduation, I think, or was it prom? Prom, prom yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so excited to, um, to be here. Um, Giselle is gonna share a bit more about what she's cooking, but Giselle is like ch from Trinidad and like I went to Giselle's wedding and it was basically like, I think a mini carnival and or a mini fet. I don't know. Just will help us like understand all these differences. Oh, and it was one in the same. One in the same. <laughs> one in the same. So it was like amazing <laughs> to celebrate with Giselle, like carnival style at her wedding with Bowie. Um, and and yeah, we're excited. So Giselle, I'm gonna hand over to you to um, yeah tell us um, what we're cooking, why we're cooking it, um, what it means to you, and um, yeah, your family. Jumping in real quick for a second. Um, we do have participants that um, may, may, may be French speakers. Um, so if anything gets a little uh, too quick or you don't understand and you're cooking with us, um, a few of us on the call are Francophone. So um, Eve, myself, I think Giselle, you understand a bit of French as well. Uh, so just, uh, just chat us and we'll, we'll explain. Uh, donc, je, je, je dirais ça en, en français rapidement. Il y a certains d'entre nous qui sont peut-être plus à l'aise en français. Uh, il y a quelques-unes d'entre nous dans l'appel qui sont francophones aussi. Donc, uh, si quelque chose, ça va être... Euh, Écrivez-nous dans le message et on, on pourra traduire. Over. Go ahead, Giselle. All ready. And so, welcome. <laughs> Good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world that you're tuning in from. I'm in New York, um, so it's 10 o'clock in the morning here. And what's funny about being 10 o'clock in the morning and cooking dinner is that this is so Caribbean. Like this is what Trinidadians do. They wake up in the morning and they put a whole feast together by the crack of dawn and they have it ready for the evening or any guests that come over. Because when you're a guest at somebody's house, you're always given food. So it's a lovely opportunity to be cooking with you guys. So what we're making is stew chicken. Stew chicken is a very simple, it's the most simple dish that you can make from the Caribbean. Um, I was gonna make curry chicken because that's more Trinidadian than stew chicken, but the curry, we're moving out of this apartment and the curry we brought over to my mom's house already. So I don't have any curry to use. Um, so, all of you guys that are cooking with me, can I just get like a, 
I want to know who's cooking with me. We got one, two, three. Uh, Lucy, you have your chicken. I'm not sure about Kareem, Fedenine, and Catherine. Um, but if you're cooking with me, if I go too fast, just like unmute yourself and shout out and let me step back in to make sure I help you. So what I'm going to start with, and this is not what I would usually do, but I have an electric stove. So I'm going to, it takes a while to get hot. So I'm going to take my rice and put that on the stove now. So if you guys can see this camera here, I've got rice here and I'm just going to wash it and then put it on the stove. Oh, washing rice even. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta wash your rice. You don't wash your rice? When I, I, when I have time, I'll wash my rice, but I don't always. Oh, okay. Yeah, you gotta wash your rice. Am I the you only one that cheats and doesn't always wash rice? You gotta wash it. Take the starch off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but sometimes I just don't have that time. Okay, I'm the only <laughs> <laughs> no, Evelyn also stays washing her rice. So with rice, you guys all know how to make rice, right? I don't need to tell you how to make rice. Okay, great. <laughs> Bonjour tout le monde. Je m'appelle Evelyn. Je, je suis en train de agiter euh, un peu des instructions. Euh, donc maintenant, nous sommes en train de laver notre riz. Et euh, les discussions est que apparemment c'est pas c'est pas partout que tout le monde lave le riz. <rire> Donc Lucy, est-ce que vous lavez le riz? <rire> toujours, Adeline, toujours. Il faut toujours laver le riz. <rire> en right. tout cas, de ce côté de l'Afrique, on lave souvent le riz. <rire> so what I have here is chicken. I got two packets of chicken. I don't know how much chicken you guys have, um, but let's all get together on the same page with the chicken. Um, I know Lucy, you said you had to cut your chicken up some, so make sure that you do that. This is the size of the pieces that I'm using. Giselle, are we going skinless? Um, no, there's skin on here. Okay, cool. It's just not on all the pieces. So Giselle, what are you doing at this moment? I'm putting the chicken in a, in a bowl so I can okay. wash it. Okay. I do wash my chicken for the record. <laughs> And when I wash it, I would use either lemon or vinegar. Today I'm using the vinegar. Why? It helps to get all the impurities out of the chicken. Oh, that's something new. So my father says. <laughs> Sorry, I stepped away to rewash my chicken. Did you keep the skin on or are you taking the skin off or it's optional? It's optional, yeah. completely optional. Because my pieces have a little bit of skin and a little bit of not skin, just the way that it was cut in the store. So this is where I'm gonna take a little vinegar, if I can open it, because my husband closes these really tight. And put that in there and just work it through the chicken. Did you get a whole chicken and cut it? Um, no, and you're I, went it. The, I went to the Caribbean supermarket where they serve, they, they sell cut up pieces of chicken. Okay. Yeah. Nice. If I had to cut it myself, I would have been up so early. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So are you like massaging the vinegar um, yep. in there? Yes. Oh, okay. I also want to know who's got like um, feet and wings in their chicken pieces. Or is oh, it I have pieces of wings and, and legs. I don't have feet. That's a DR thing. You got fresh feet? Yeah. <laughs> is it just me? You're doing it. I got a little wing going. A little wing. <laughs> so 
My name is Giselle Francis. It says Giselle Eli. That's my maiden name. I'm Francis now. Um, in the bio that you have, you have that I am a life coach, and which I am, but I haven't coached in two years since COVID started because COVID was a very hard time for me. So I went through a depression. It was horrible. And I just kind of like packed up coaching because I wasn't in a place to help people. But what I do now is I'm assistant director of prevention services at a health organization. So I work with, with, I work with multiple programs um, that are there to prevent HIV, HCV, which is hep C, and do different, do different group level interventions for the community. So that's what I do now. Um, I'm also a wife, and that's one of the biggest roles in my life. I take it seriously. I'm not always so good at it, but I take it seriously. <laughs> um, in fact, he's very excited to come home to a home-cooked meal today. So that was one of the other things. It's nice to do this because when COVID happened, I kind of stopped. I stopped doing everything. Okay, COVID just took me for a, a loop. Um, so cooking is not something that I do as much as I used to, but when I do do it, I do it good. <laughs> so um, I'm glad to be here with you guys. Okay, so are you guys, do you have your chickens washed? Yes, does it have to be super small pieces? No, 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 it doesn't have to be. That's just how I like it, this is my preference. Um, you're gonna take one onion and chop it small. Um, to add also, Giselle has um, spent time in Zambia and Uganda and also Tanzania. We were there together in Zanzibar, um, yeah. but also working in international public health. And yeah, so, that was one of my things. favorite times of my life. <laughs> um, so it's great to hear how you like transitioned that into, you know, working in public in the public health space in um in New York in fact. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you say that because having worked internationally in HIV, sometimes it was a concern for me to know if I was going to be able to get a job yeah. in America. But most of the employers that I had in America were very impressed by the work that I did in Uganda and in Zambia. So it made getting a job a bit easier. Donc, euh, juste pour, pour, pour les francophones, nous sommes à l'étape de, on a fini de laver notre poulet, maintenant on est en train de couper les oignons. Donc, euh, elle, elle, Gisèle nous dit de couper un, un morceau, euh, un, pardon, un oignon, un, un oignon entier euh, pour, euh, pour, pour la préparation. Elle s'est aussi présentée. Et euh, elle nous disait qu'elle était un life coach auparavant, mais ça fait deux ans qu'elle elle ne faisait plus cela euh, puisque les temps avec COVID étaient, étaient assez difficiles. Elle, elle, a eu, elle a eu un petit moment de, de, de dépression entre temps, mais maintenant elle travaille pour une boîte, euh, travaille, euh, pour une boîte qui... Euh, qui travaille dans le domaine de, de la santé, particulièrement euh, avec euh, euh, les, les personnes séropositives euh, du, du VIH, SIDA. Et juste euh, euh, au cas où on va un peu plus vite, vous pouvez nous poser les questions. Bon, la personne qui est francophone que je connais ici, au moins une des personnes, je sais qu'on prend aussi euh, l'anglais, donc euh, coucou Fécandine, bienvenue, mais s'il y a d'autres aussi et qu'on va trop vite, euh, faites-nous signe et on traduira. All right, so if you have a large onion, you only need half of it. Some onions are different sizes. I should have said that. Can we see your, how much onion you've got? Um, can, can you see the camera over the, can you see this oh, one? Okay, great, yeah. Is that, that's it, right? That's all we need? Okay. Awesome. So you're going to put that in your chicken. If you have adobo, you would use adobo. If you don't have adobo, any kind of all-purpose seasoning or chicken seasoning or royco, 
would work. Oh, uh, interesting fact, you didn't mention it, but that your husband, um, who you married, is also a member of our high school class. He sure is. And <laughs> I knew him since middle school. And when I knew him in middle school, we were just high by friends. Middle school and high school, we were high by friends. Like, hey, boy, what's up? Hey, you know, and it, it, it was no more than that. And I used to see him sucking his thumb and he promises me that he was never sucking his thumb, but I know he was sucking his thumb because he sucked his thumb for like a really long time till he was- Look <laughs> at you putting his business out there. <laughs> I thought this was a safe space. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> and then we met in 2016 and it was the weekend of the Labor Day Parade and we never looked back. The first year and a half. Growing up with someone and then coming back, how many years later? And I know well, it's crazy. And the thing is, I never knew that he was Caribbean. I always thought he was Black American. Oh, he is. He is. And that's what, when we, when we reconnected that day, we sat in the car and we drank some beer and we talked for hours. <laughs> and all of this stuff about being Caribbean and what it was like in the household and what it was like at carnivals. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look at you. You're me. <laughs> <laughs> Which island is he from? He's from Grenada. Mm -hmm. Oh, did not so, know like, that. Their, their, <laughs> their, their dish is oil down. So that's like a, a really interesting dish to cook because it's got all kinds of provisions like dashing, plantain, potato, um, like a salted pork or a salted beef or even fish or lobster. Um, wow. Goes in that with coconut milk and callaloo. And then you put all the greens on top and you let it cook down and it becomes like this hearty stew. Hmm. You want to hear another funny That's story? So, this is why their, their wedding was like straight up carnival. Yes. Which, yeah. which Caribbean like country? Caribbean families. It was amazing. Yes, that's why. <laughs> and we also had the DJ play music from Grenada. Yeah. Ah, Grenada. Ah, Grenada. Okay, Grenada. So, oh, you want to hear another funny story? Yeah. I had his parents live in Grenada and in 2011 I went on a cruise with my mom and her church friends and when we docked at Grenada or in Grenada the one of her church friends brought her to this house and it was like 15 of us and we went to this house they took us to the beach they gave us a tour of the house they cooked oil down for us come to find out this was his parents house no. Oh yeah, and this was in 2011, five years before we met. So it's crazy. All right, let's see. So garlic powder. Do you guys have garlic powder? Uh, yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so with the garlic, you can put as much garlic as you like because everybody has a different taste for garlic. So I go a little heavy on the garlic. garlic. I love garlic. Oh, you have fresh garlic. Yeah. yeah. Great. I have garlic powder. So I have that too. <laughs> okay. I like garlic. I yeah. fresh garlic as well. I clearly love garlic. Mm -hmm. So we got fresh and powders. <laughs> okay. So I'm just putting on my pot so it gets hot because, as I said, my stove takes a while to get hot. And then you want to put some black pepper in the pot. In the pot? In the chicken. In oh, the no. chicken. Donc, les trois dictions. Maintenant, nous sommes en train d'ajouter des... Comment dit-on, Lucie? L'ail. Poivre. Et poivre. Et l'ail et poivre. So, you can see here, you've got your onions, your garlic, your chicken seasoning, your black pepper. Now you want to go in with your hands and massage everything through. If the seasoning that you used for the chicken is not salty, you can add a little bit of salt. But if it is salty, then you might not need it. Yeah, it's everything. Oh, it's everything. Oh, okay. It's the onion. It's actually the right way. 
we were talking yesterday about Trinidad when, because carnival is known, is one of the biggest things known in Trinidad. And carnival happens every year around this time. Last Monday and Tuesday was supposed to be carnival, but it didn't happen at the extreme that it usually does because of COVID. So when COVID happened, carnivals all over the world were canceled. And it was such like a loss for our communities because carnival is that one time that you get to go out and be free and free up yourself and whine on everything and you know just have a grand old time and just COVID stopped so many things so I was wondering with you guys what are some things that COVID has stopped in your life for me it stopped me from wearing makeup I don't wear makeup anymore unless I have to go to like an event um, maybe jumping in there to to do a bit of translating, uh, but also dig a little bit deeper in case some people here are not at all familiar with Carnival. Um, mm. But I'll translate a little bit of, of what you've said so far. Um, donc, euh, euh, elle nous disait que euh, la semaine passée était censée être carnaval au Trinidad et, et que à cause de, de COVID-19, euh, ces deux dernières années, ça a été annulé, hein, y compris cette année aussi, euh, ce qui est vraiment dommage parce que pour la culture au Trinidad, c'est vraiment un moment là où euh, les gens s'amusent, ils arrivent à se lâcher un peu. C'était censé être, je pense, mardi passé. Et, et, et malheureusement, à cause du, du virus, ça a vraiment temporisé beaucoup de choses, y compris ça. Et elle demandait, euh, en, en termes de discussion, quelle, quelle est la chose que COVID vous a empêché de faire ou que vous avez arrêté de faire à cause de COVID. Et elle disait que pour elle-même, uh, à cause de COVID, maintenant, elle ne porte plus de maquillage. <laughs> um, so can you tell us a bit, of, a bit about Carnival? Because we've got people from all over the world right now who may not um, sure. like know Carnival and like what it means for the Caribbean generally. Sure. Um, Carnival is a celebration of freedom, freeing the slaves. And when you would get dressed up like that, that was your way of saying you were free. And over the years, Carnival has developed into something really beautiful because not only are there costumes that are like, you know, rags and cloth, but there are costumes that are like beautiful bikinis <laughs> with gems and rhinestones and feathers and headpieces. And when you see the pretty mass, it's called pretty mass. Mm -hmm. That happens on the Tuesday. Um, when the pretty mass is coming down the road, it's like all inhibitions are lost because it's just so beautiful. You've got trucks that are blazing music. The whole town transforms. Um, and it's just something that we celebrate every year and every country has its own carnival. And in the States, every we have about maybe five to 10 places that do have carnivals. In London, there's a carnival at Notting Hill in August. Yeah. Um, so this is how we celebrate life and we celebrate freedom. Okay, thank you so much, Izawa. I'll translate that very, sure. very interesting piece of history. Um, also, uh, I've been to Carabana, which is my favorite. Oh yes, in Toronto. <laughs> In Toronto. Um, donc, euh, euh, Carnaval, c'est vraiment une célébration qui, qui, est, qui a émergé du fait que, euh, à l'époque, euh, euh, quand on libérait les esclaves et qu'ils devenaient euh, des hommes libres ou des femmes libres, il y avait euh, cette célébration et la personne qui portait les costumes, un costume spécifique, ça signifiait qu'ils avaient gagné leur liberté euh, en tant qu'esclaves. Et donc, euh, à travers la, les années, ça a vraiment évolué comme... Euh, Une, une, une fête très importante et de plus en plus, ce n'était plus seulement des habits simples, c'est devenu extravagant, des jolis habits, des, des bikinis avec des perles et des, et des plumes et tout ça. Et on appelait ça mars et le, le, le mardi, quand ça sortait, c'était c'était tout était permis. quoi Tout le monde se lâche, tout le monde fait la fête et tout. Et c'est vraiment devenu quelque chose ancré dans les cultures et tous les pays des 
des Caraïbes ont leur propre version de carnaval. Et maintenant, dans plusieurs autres pays, même occidentaux, il y a ces célébrations. Par exemple, dans au moins dix endroits aux États-Unis, il, en il, il y en a un à Londres aussi. Et puis, euh, euh, celui que moi j'ai mentionné, auquel j'ai participé, Caribana, qui est euh, au, au, au Canada à Toronto. Donc, euh, c'est vraiment un, un moment de, de joie et de célébration, mais, mais euh, l'historique à la base, c'est euh, la liberté des esclaves. Great. Thank you, Lucy. Mm -hmm. So, I want to jump, is everybody finished with their chicken? Yes. Okay. I want to jump into the next part, which is going to be the hardest part, because you got to have a keen eye for the sugar. What you're going to be doing is putting oil in the pot and putting sugar in the oil. What this is going to do is create a brown coloring for the chicken. Okay. So I want to do this together so you guys can see me. Okay, so maybe I'll translate that. Or, since it's or should, I, should I do it first and then have you guys do it so that if you have any yes. problems. Okay, great. So yes. just watch, watch along. OK. So let me translate real quick. Donc, okay. euh, ça, c'est une partie très importante. Il va falloir faire très attention parce que et, et elle va nous montrer comment le faire avant que nous-mêmes nous ne nous faisions le nôtre. Elle va mettre un peu d'huile dans, dans la casserole et puis mettre du sucre pour, euh, pour, pour mélanger ça. Et, et de là, euh, on va faire la même chose. Donc, on va la regarder faire ça. Oh, I see my mom's on. Shout out, mom. <laughs> Hi, Mama Lucy. Hi, Giselle. Just a quick question. Um, yes. How much oil and how much sugar? So I'm going to do it first so you okay. can watch. Giselle, I don't have brown sugar. Is um, white sugar fine? White sugar is fine. Okay, so I'm going to put in oil about half of the pot, not half of the pot. You know, that's not what I'm saying. Half of the bottom of the pot. Can you guys see so the- half a cup, pictures? perhaps? Yeah. No, that's definitely not half a cup. Maybe like a quarter of a cup. A quarter of a cup, okay. Because everybody's pot <laughs> might be a different size. Um, cool, it's so funny, like the way we cook um, black African people in the diaspora, like measurement is really difficult. Um, it yeah. is. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in about a handful of sugar. And if you guys can see how that's cooking. And you want to stir that into the oil. So a handful of sugar, would you say that that was closer to half a cup? About a little less than half a cup. A little less, okay. All right, so if you could see the color of this, it's turning a brown. You just want it to turn brown and then bubble a little bit. It starts to get like puffy. And once that happens, can you guys see that? Yeah. Once it happens, you put the chicken in. And you toss the chicken into the browning. Quick question. Um, my sugar is clumping in the pot. Did you have any guidance for that? And then also regulate- Are you the stirring heat. it? I am stirring it. Um, and some of it like clumped when I put the chicken in. Um, no, 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 you can't. Hold on a second. Did you, um, did you let the sugar melt before you put the chicken in? Oh, maybe it hadn't melted fully. Ah, okay. So, and then the other thing was about the heat. Is it medium, high, low heat? Um, I have mine on seven, so it's like a medium high. Okay. Okay, so we were melting the sugar. Got you. Yes. 
Um, Evelyn, just one second, uh, because we've been talking a lot and not translating. I don't know, Fécandine, est-ce que tu prépares avec nous ou tu regardes? Just checking if she's cooking or not. Um, Allô? Okay. Oui? Alors là, je suis en train de regarder, je, note, je suis en train de noter. D'accord, ok. Elle dit qu'il faut mettre dans la casserole l'huile et, et, et le, le sucre et bien mélanger que ça fonde avant de maintenant mettre le poulet, mais de faire attention sinon ça peut euh, s'attraper. Comme moi j'étais de l'autre côté, je n'ai pas tout entendu, mais j'imagine que tu as capté la plupart. Oui, oui, c'est bon, c'est bon. Ok, merci. What I'm going to go ahead and do is peel the potato and carrot. And how many potatoes? Is it just one big one or? One big one. One big one is good and one big carrot or two small ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Ceux qui parlent français comme Lucie est de l'autre côté de la cuisine, elle dit que pendant que vous êtes en train de préparer le poulet, euh, il, elle okay. se met de côté et elle euh, épluche la pomme de terre et la carotte. Euh, Quelqu'un a demandé, je crois, c'est Yves, combien de pommes de terre? Elle a dit une grosse pomme de terre. Merci beaucoup. Et comme euh, tu as commencé à discuter, je me demande si tu peux te présenter. Je voudrais apprendre plus à qui tu es et ton histoire. Je, je suis la maman de Lucie. Je suis là pour ah, un support. Maman, bienvenue. <rire> Soyez les bienvenus. Je suis, merci. Je suis de temps en temps, j'essaie de voir. Oui, c'est magnifique. Merci pour, <laughs> pour votre présence. We're so happy that we have Lucy's mom here who's helping her out with the translation and um, who's, who's been able to attend. Thank you so much for coming, Mama Lucy. You're welcome. <laughs> so Giselle, I actually started cutting my potato. Was I not supposed to do that? No, you could do that. Okay. I'm just feeling, I'm right behind you. Okay. And square, small, medium, or large? Um, that's your preference. Okay, great. Ours is looking good, but it's looking a bit dark. But I think we we put we I think we jumped the gun and put the all purpose. And I think that's later, apparently. No, the all purpose is supposed to go in before it goes in the pot. Oh, perfect. So we did it right. Okay, for some reason, yeah, ours, well, maybe we got a lot of sugar, yeah, because ours looks delicious, but darker than yours. So, Evelyn, you can go ahead and add the potatoes to your chicken. Okay, awesome. Now, we are going to add the pommes de terre, coupé. And your chicken should have given off liquid, so you don't have to add too much water. Yeah, definitely for my end, lots of water. Um, if you're adding carrots, you can add a carrot now. Giselle, are we still on medium to high heat and we're just kind of letting it sit in there? High heat, yeah. Like, okay. uh, like right in the middle. So I don't have that much water in mine like yours. Should I add some? Yes. Here. Alice, is it because you're using white meat? Or are you using brown meat as well, dark? I've used like most of the village chicken. chicken. Okay, so like oh, the whole chicken. I don't know if it's a village chicken. I just I don't know. <laughs> okay. But they're like different pieces in there. <laughs> <laughs> so once you've added the potatoes and the carrots, you can go ahead and put a lid on it, stir it around and put a lid on it and let it do its thing. And if you want to taste how it's coming along, just grab a little gravy and put it in your palm. Yeah. The first thing you did was taste it. <laughs> yeah. And if at, if at that point when you taste it, you feel it needs more seasonings, go on and add some more. How's everyone doing? Have you guys already put the lids on? I'm not ready for a lid yet. But is everyone, are you guys all adding lids now? Yeah, I think it's all, yeah. Yep, lid on for us. 
Yep, same here. So once the lid is on, you can prepare your rice if your rice is not prepared already. Giselle, when you put the lid on, do you lower the heat? Um, not in the beginning. Okay. In, in the beginning, I, I let it cook for about 10 to 15 minutes with the heat high. And then I bring the heat down. Because okay. as you close the lid, there's still going to be water that keeps coming into the pot. And you want all of that. Because that makes the gravy. Awesome. I don't know if you can, you can see our pot. We were going to try and show you, but... Yes. Oh, great. Yeah. Perfect. Bubbly and nice looking. What is the estimate time cooking for the chicken? So once it's on the pot and it's once it's on the stove and it's covered, you could probably cook it for about 30, 30 to 45 minutes. So this is like the end. Okay. Yeah. Then we definitely reduce, I guess, the heat. If not, the yes. water will go. Okay, thank you. Yes. You can reduce the heat after like 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm going to reduce my heat now. Okay, thank you. You girls over there, stop tasting. <laughs> I can see you tasting the chicken each time you stir the pot. <laughs> <laughs> I like how mine tastes too. It's good. Yes, I saw you too. And I even saw the children will run and <laughs> you see and the sugar doesn't good. make it sweet. It looks delicious, yes. You see, the sugar doesn't make the chicken sweet. It just gives it a color. I got to admit, when you said sugar, I was, whoa, it's going to be sweet like Chinese, mm -hmm. but I guess not with the spices. No. It just uh, overtakes the sugar. Yes. Okay. We tasted ours, and we were surprised. You don't, it doesn't taste sweet at all, despite the amount of sugar we put in it. It's just a nice balance. And I like super spicy food. So for me to say it's not sweet means it's really not sweet. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you want to put some heat in it, you can. You could add some pepper sauce. You could add some chilies. Evelyn and Lucy, I'm sure you guys are adding your chilies now, right? <laughs> well, I don't, yes. I don't want to make Karina die. She is eating <laughs> with me. So <laughs> yes. I'm going to keep it, keep it reasonable. <laughs>